Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So today we are gonna do another um, update on the Artichoke Grow Challenge. If you've been following along since the beginning, this originally started off that Lacey Family Farms and I were gonna do some collaboration videos on uh, a competition to see who could grow the most artichokes this year. Neither of us had ever grown artichokes before, um, and so it was gonna be a challenge for both of us. They're on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast, so we were hoping to see if we could get some differences and all that. Then it came down to um, Scott at Lacey Family Farms, his artichokes, um, they either didn't sprout or they died right after they sprouted, and so that kind of ended that challenge, and so now I've just been in a challenge against myself and Mother Nature. Um, and then along the way, I also give you some little tidbits on artichoke history that we will also do another little bit on that today. But here we are at the end of August. Well, almost the end, today is the 22nd of August. Although by the time that you see this, it'll probably be mid-September because I've got other videos already loaded and scheduled over the next couple of weeks. So this will come after those. At any rate, I wanted to give you an update on where my artichokes are so far for this year. So look how big these artichoke plants are. Oh, Abby, you ruined my my ruse. Okay, so the reality is, is that my artichokes aren't really any bigger than they were probably the last time I did this video. Maybe a little bit, but not by much. These two, this one, and this one back here behind me, for the most part look pretty healthy. Um, but they aren't getting, you know, very large. And they've also had some other struggles uh, with some leaves that have kind of died off and looked a little fungusy, But you can kind of see that they're kind of uh, got some of this going on. Dead leaves, um, not looking too healthy. So some of the ones at the bottom. This one here has got some death, <laughs> death look to it. So some of the leaves at the bottom, you can kind of tell they're, they're uh, not looking so great. But as a whole, the plant looks pretty good, as well as that one back there. The third one, not so much. This one has pretty much died off. Um, this is the Colorado Red, and this was the variety that said that it did better in cooler temperatures. Um, so I think with the heats, the high heats that we have had this summer, uh, you know, so many days that were in the 90s and high humidity, lots of rain, that was just too much for the Colorado Red to bear. Although you do see there's like a little bit of green there in the middle, that's new. So something is still living in there, still trying to hang on. So I really think that the problem that I've run into with these artichokes has been the amount of rain and humidity that we've had this summer. We, I mean, it's the mid-Atlantic, we do get that in the summer, but this summer has been extremely, for our particular area, very wet and very humid and very hot. Artichokes, you know, they originated in the Mediterranean, so they, they do like the warm weather, but all the wet, I think, is what has really stunted their growth and caused some of this fungus, killed off, uh, for the most part, the Colorado Red. And I think that has been my biggest problem that may have not occurred last summer or, you know, in other seasons where we have not had as much rain. So, I... I'm not going to say it's a complete failure yet. Uh, I think I just didn't have the best conditions for growing artichokes this year. Now, one thing that's uh, kind of cool about artichokes is that they are perennials. So if I can trim them back, if they don't do anything else between now and first frost, uh, if I can trim them back at the end of this season and get them covered over in mulch and protect them from any extreme cold in these boxes, I have a chance that they might sprout next year and maybe we'll have less rain next year 
less humidity and maybe next year they will uh you know then produce for me get bigger give me some actual artichokes my niece lives out in washington state and she had responded to one of my facebook posts about uh the artichokes and said how many artichokes do you need to win this competition and she posted a picture of her artichokes which were just massive just artichokes flowing all over the place so Shana, I would say uh, if you are part of this competition, you definitely have won because uh, you actually got artichokes to eat and I did not. But enough about my artichoke woes. Let's go to a little bit of artichoke history. So for today's artichoke history, we're going to talk about the Italian Renaissance painter Carvaccio. Uh, he has about 60 surviving paintings still. Um, but he used to paint some very large paintings. Uh, at one point, he actually chopped a hole in the ceiling of his rental apartment uh, to accommodate the size of a canvas that he was working on. When his landlady got mad about it, he threw rocks at her. Uh, he was kind of known for being a bit of a, a thug, I guess. He, he threw rocks at police, uh, would pull out swords and pistols uh, in the streets of Rome. He got thrown in jail for assaulting a fellow painter um, and had other all kinds of brawls, battles, uh, and fights in pubs. But he also, at one point, attacked a waiter over a plate of artichokes. Here's a, an excerpt from the waiter uh, who described what happened in a statement to the police back in 1604. I brought them eight cooked artichokes, four cooked in butter and four fried in oil. The accused asked me which were cooked in butter and which fried in oil, and I told him to smell them, which would easily enable him to tell the difference. He got angry and without saying anything more, grabbed an earthenware dish and hit me on the cheek at the level of my mustache, injuring me slightly. And then he got up and grabbed his friend's sword, which was lying on the table, intending perhaps to strike me with it. But I got up and came here to the police station to make a formal complaint. Carvaccio got pretty upset over a plate of artichokes. So that's it for the artichoke updates um, for now. Uh, I might do an, another one later on this year. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but we may pick back up with this. If I don't, we'll pick back up with this playlist next year. And maybe over the winter, I'll show you some of the winter preparations that I'll do. And then we'll see if they come back next year, if, if nothing else happens. Um, so... We have, we've learned some stuff, we have a start, but we haven't got a final product <laughs> that I can eat. Um, so we'll see what happens in time. Whatever is going on in your neck of the woods, I hope that you are having a successful summer and a successful crop and success at your homestead. And if you've tried some new uh, crops this year, let me know how it went. You know, if you had successes, failures, what you've learned. And if you're growing artichokes, give us updates on how your artichokes have done so far this season. And hopefully yours have been doing better than, than mine have here. But thanks for hanging out again with me today. And we will see you again soon. Have a great day. Namaste.